Truck Series about Atlanta Motor Speedway. Welcome to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Easy Care Vehicle Services Contracts 200. Let's head trackside for our pre-race activities, beginning with our Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the Air Force Junior ROTC of Lovejoy High School presents our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Shiloh Point Elementary in Cumming and Northwestern Middle School in Alpharetta, Georgia leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And now, please welcome Steve Wingfield, president of Steve Wingfield Evangelistic Association, as he offers today's invocation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've blessed us with. I thank you for the Atlanta Motor Speedway and their staff. I pray your blessing upon them. I pray for each team, each driver, Lord. I pray that it will be a safe day, a good day. I pray that you'd help us to see competition but fun and enjoyment and i pray your blessing upon this entire day and then we pray it in the matchless name of jesus amen and now ladies and gentlemen please welcome one accord as they perform the national anthem oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting. gentlemen let's hear it for one accord and the f-18s bmfa 142 speeds are picking up teams are ready we're about to go racing from atlanta yeah i heard you i, I didn't know when you want me to pick it Fast work in tight spots, nothing's better. Or how about the Craftsman Cross Force Combination Wrench Set? The handle is turned 90 degrees for comfort. And to put everything in its place, try the Craftsman Quiet Glide Storage Chest. Drawers open smooth and easy. Innovation from Craftsman. Official tools of NASCAR. Get it at Sears. What makes the world's perfect beer? Start with the choicest hops and the best barley malt. Then Beechwood age it for that crisp, clean taste. Finally, throw in a football and 60,000 friends. The taste that makes it game day. The perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. Okay, Rusty, this should be easy. And action. Get your tickets now Cut. for it. Rusty, more energy. Get your tickets now Cut. for Rusty, more emotion. Get your tickets now. Cut. Gosh darn it, if I could feel the power and the rumble, and if I was at Texas Motor Speedway, uh, I'd say it like this. Get your tickets now to the Dickies 500 at Texas Motor Speedway, November the 4th. That's it. Call 888-816-8671 or visit TexasMotorSpeedway.com. Man, that was tougher than actually winning a race. If you want to make money by working on cars like these, you can. The automotive industry needs more technicians like Dave and me who know how to work with current technology. 
We inspect and maintain vehicles and even customize cars. But you know what's really cool? Getting paid to do what we love. You can do this too. You just need the right training. Why don't you call Lincoln Tech now? For a free brochure, call 800-754-0138. That's 800-754-0138. Call now. Hi there, I'm Mary. I hope that commercial has inspired you to pick up the phone and ask for an informative brochure on career training. If a new career is calling your name, take the first step and request a brochure. It'll help to answer all your questions. We are ready to take your call 24-7, nights, weekends, whenever. Why wait another second? This is a perfect time to call. For a free brochure, call 800-754-0138. That's 800-754-0138. Call now. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on Speed is brought to you by the Ford F-150, built for tough. By the official tools of NASCAR, Craftsman, and by Fastenal. We get it right. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. The drivers are climbing into their trucks, getting ready for today's command. And before we get to that, we want to talk about the weather. Obviously, a beautiful day here in Atlanta. They haven't had any moisture here for so long. They are desperately seeking it, but we're not going to see it today. It's going to be a sunny day today, 64 degrees, a perfect day for racing here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And with that temperature brings unbelievable speeds. Now, the speed probably isn't going to be the first thing on Mike Skinner and Ron Hornaday's mind. It's going to be who they're sitting next to when they start this race because they make up row number one, and they're only 11 points apart as we look at our Ford point standings. An amazing points battle that we have between those two. The biggest thing I think that we're going to see today, though, is at the start of this race, we've got two guys separated by 11 points, but really they're only separated by about 10 inches on the racetrack. What makes this racetrack so fast, Phil? It is such a great racetrack. And that point battle that's 11 points right now is either going to be 6 or 16 <laughs> after lap number one because one of those two guys is going to lead this right. race. But what a terrific racetrack here. You can run on the bottom. You can run in the middle. You can run the top. When I think about the Craftsman Truck Series, I think about racing here at Atlanta. We've had such great finishes through the years, and I really expect today is going to be no exception. I think Todd Bodine and uh, Kyle Busch think, Maybe it won't be 16 or 6. Maybe it'll still be 11. We might be yeah. able to jump around these two. I promise you they're preoccupied with one another. They understand the challenge. They're going to line up side by side and race back here and try to get those five points. Maybe cut the lead in half if Hornaday is able to, to, to do so. But listen, Kyle Busch is thinking these guys pay attention to each other, and I'll get this lead, and I'll be on my merry way. So uh, I, will, I don't think this is an exaggeration. This is the most anticipated lap in Craftsman Truck Series, first lap in Craftsman Truck Series history. Everybody's sitting on the edge of their seat, watching at home, watching in the garage area, sitting in the haulers in the cup garage saying, what are these two going to do? Because that's their reputation. They hammer, and they're getting ready to get after it. Well, and they're going to be getting after it here very soon. We're going to start the engines. Let's go down for today's command. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your Grand Marshal, Dmitry Yanashevsky, as he gives the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. That most anticipated first lap is the next thing we're going to see. The green flag will come out at Atlanta Motor Speedway when we come back. Race 22 for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series coming up next on Speed. Fans are always looking for a better seat, so we built it. He'll be fine. Yep. Okay, the presentation's tomorrow, so let's make sure we all know our usual responsibilities. Jeff, you keep feeding me old information. Dean, I need you to continue not living up to your resume. Sue, you're in charge of waffling. Are you sure? Jerome, you'll talk a big game, then do nothing. Let's do it. Rick, can you fold under pressure for me? Like a lawn chair. And Ted, you just keep thinking everyone's out to get you. They are. I'll be at FedEx Kinko's, where they'll help me design, print, copy, and finish the proposal. Put your presentations together at FedEx Kinko's, where color copies are now just 49 cents. Our office is your office. I'm comfortable going fast. 
I'm comfortable slowing down. I'm comfortable in Wrangler. Introducing relaxed straight leg and relaxed boot fit from Wrangler Jeans Company. New fits, new styles, great comfort. Wrangler Jeans Company, a new generation of Wrangler. What is tough? Tough as a Suzuki ATV. Quad fare, on the other hand, is easy. During Suzuki's quad fare, get low payments on select Suzuki ATVs, including the best in class, King Quad, Quad Racer, or Quad Sport. Plus, when you buy a King Quad or utility ATV, you can get a free worn winch. Add a worn wireless control system for only $69. Or if you purchase a Quad Racer or select Quad Sport, get up to $550 in free MSR riding gear. You better act quickly, because unlike Suzuki ATVs, these deals won't last. Easy Care Vehicle Service Contracts 200 about to get underway from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Again, the 22nd of 25 races in the 2007 season for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Trucks have fired up. They are about to roll out onto the racetrack as they do that. Let's look at the starting grid. It'll roll across the bottom of your screen. Ron Hornaday grabs another pole in his amazing career. And right beside him on row number one will be Mike Skinner. While that continues to roll along the bottom of the screen, let's shine a spotlight on a few different drivers. We'll start off, Adam Alexander, who's in your speed spotlight? How about Shane C? What a special driver, what a special day it is for this driver. A native of Tucker, Georgia, his owner, Billy Ballou, a native of Atlanta. He's raced in this truck two times already this season, including a top 10 at New Hampshire. He starts 30th today, looking to finish out what would be a great run in the last three races for Billy Blue Motorsports in that number 15 truck. It will be fun to watch the Jordan, Georgia native run in his home state this afternoon. Tony? Adam, Brandon Witt makes a return visit to the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, ironically with the team he drove for full-time in 2005, Red Horse Racing. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Witt reunites with crew chief Jamie Jones, and he hopes to parlay this one-race deal into a full-time ride for someone in 2008. Phil? Tony, I want to take a look at that 03 Jermaine Toyota right there. Justin Marks. Justin had problems yesterday in practice. Actually lost a right front tire, made contact with his primary truck. This is really Todd Bodine's backup truck that Justin will be driving. He finished the season strong in the Arca Remax Series. Eight top tens in a row to propelled him to a top five in the point standings. He's going to start back in the 28th position in that Jermaine Toyota. Also with some sponsorship from Voodoo Ride. But Justin Marks, first start ever in the Craftsman Truck Series. Mikey, who are you going to take a look at? Right behind Justin is Joey Clanton, Bill. And uh, the road to Rookie of the Year honors might go through this guy. He's Charles Willie Allen's right now. But the way the points work, as he makes more starts, he will close that deficit quickly. He has four top tens, racing in his own backyard. A native of, of Georgia. Look for some news about Joey and his sponsor or where they're going to wind up next year coming up after the race. And Mikey, today we have a bonus speed spotlight, and it's with Krista Voda. Krista, you ran off the setup set pretty quickly. Where'd you go? Well, you guys always have a pretty good seat, but today I have definitely got you beat. This is Marty, the pilot of Goodyear's Spirit of Innovation, and that is where we are at. We are in the blimp flying over the top of Atlanta Motor Speedway. So I thought, what a better time to give you guys my speed spotlight driver. Remember Travis Kittleson? We talked about him last week not having a ride. He was working as a crew member. Today he is back where he wants to be, behind the wheel of the number 08 Chevrolet. And from my vantage point up here, Travis is already looking hungry. I have got the best seat in the house. The race fans at home, they are going to have these kind of views, the aerial coverage from Goodyear's Spirit of Innovation all race and guys I gotta say the blimp quite possibly the only thing carrying more hot air than you guys <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness Krista I wonder, I wonder if she saw those jets go by <laughs> that, <laughs> it was close I'm telling you that flyby with the f-18s going by the blimp was close 
We're going to ride along with a few different drivers today. The 09 of Joey Clanton, we continue to spotlight him. He carries one of our cameras. He'll start in the 29th spot today. We're also going to talk about Jack Sprague making one of his final starts in this Conway Toyota for the Wyler Racing Team. He will start back in the 26th position, one earlier this year at Daytona. There you have Dennis Setzer, a man that uh, he never qualifies that great on these big tracks, but he always races to the front. And this track promotes that type of attitude, Phil. No matter where you start, right now you think you could win this race. There's two guys on the front row that are determined to lead the first lap, but there's guys that qualified 20, 25th that could race in the top 10 in two or three laps. And another guy carrying our camera that is so determined to get that first win is Matt Crafton. He will start in the 12th spot. And so a little bit closer to the front of the field. We have had amazing passes take place at this racetrack, and we are expecting them again today, and hopefully we'll be able to ride along with Matt Crafton as he makes some of those amazing passes on this mile-and-a-half racetrack. Let's head down trackside for our thoughts before green with Adam Alexander. You know, Rick, Roush Fenway Racing has been amazing in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. There are only three tracks on the schedule where they have not gone to victory lane. One of them here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. But that doesn't mean the organization has not had success here. Check this out. Five times they've won in the Nextel Cup Series, four times in Bush, and they've got two guys starting in the top ten today, Travis Quapel and the guy you see on screen, Eric Darnell. Perhaps their luck will turn around and they can erase that Atlanta Motor Speedway goose egg in the Truck Series here today. Tony? In the pre-race drivers meeting, series director Wayne Auten stressed one word to the drivers, respect. He said you didn't have it last week in the crash field race at Martinsville. You didn't respect each other and you didn't respect the track. But here at Atlanta, you must respect this track or you can get into trouble. And Michael, you know, at speeds like this, you have to re have respect for every one of your competitors. You've got to be conscious of the fact that you're running 185 mile an hour on these straightaways. I mean, that's the key to this place. You're going so very fast that if, if you make a mistake, it's multiplied 100 times over just a little bump into someone at Martinsville. Some, a gentle bump here can turn into big problems. We look at our restore race analysis. 36 trucks will start just over 200 miles, 130 laps. The pit window we think is going to be around 50 to 60 laps. Now, we've thrown an interesting variable in there. We've got a competition caution that's going to take place at lap 30, Phil. Yeah, NASCAR wants these teams to be able to look at their tires after about 30 laps. Everybody talked about the tire wear yesterday, but that tire wear got better as the race went on. We had a couple of Nextel Cup practices here today already, so there's a lot more rubber down on the racetrack than there was yesterday when practice started. A Adam, what's going on with the 30 truck? Yeah, a former winner here at Atlanta, and he cannot hear tr crew chief Mike Hillman Jr. We're talking about Todd Bodine. He can hear the spotter. Mike told him they would go back to the trailer and get an alternate helmet for him if they can't get the problem rendered between now and then. As of now, they plan to run all communications through the spotter. And the last thing Mike Hillman Jr. said to him, lead every lap, then it won't matter. We'll keep you posted on the situation with Todd Bodine. Communication issues early in the going here. And very critical here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, as I mentioned before. Our last race here had 21 lead changes. Well, the most exciting lap that you talked about, Mike, is about to get underway. Green flag flies from Atlanta. Ron Hornaday with a great start. Mike Skinner not giving him an inch as they go into turns one and two. Hey, neither one of those guys are going to back off that throttle all the way around this racetrack. Oh, look at the inside. Kyle Busch makes the move to the inside on Mike Skinner. Hornaday moved up and took that outside lane away from Skinner and is going to parlay that move into leading this first lap. Hornaday works his way out of turn number four. Kyle Busch has stayed glued to the bottom of the racetrack. They race for second. It's going to be Skinner taking second. Hornaday will go across and get those five bonus points. You know, Mike Skinner is not going to be happy with how Ron Hornaday moved up the hill coming off of two on lap number one. Here, Dennis Setzer getting out of the gas as he rides very high on the racetrack. We ride along in his fast and all dodge. But you know, his hands were tied, Phil. He could not force the issue. He, Skinner took the, Hornaday took the line away from him. And then Kyle Busch took the spot away from Hornaday. Look at Hornaday fall back to third now as Skinner has moved up to second and Kyle Busch leads the race. It appeared to me there were some Chevrolets working together on that start. Kyle Busch got a great start. Could have took him three wide into turn one. Elected to push Hornaday out in front of Skinner. And now Hornaday said, okay, Kyle, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Have fun. <laughs> Chevrolet's working together. 
about a half a lap ago there was a scary moment on the racetrack take a look at this oh. Josh Wise sideways with the help of Eric Darnell he's he's used to being sideways in his dirt car but I bet that felt somewhat different at 170 mile an hour field you hear Josh have to get out of the throttle I don't think there was any contact by that 99 of Eric Darnell Josh just got a little bit loose up off that corner starting to spread out a bit on the racetrack now they They've given each other a little bit of space. We're seeing some of the drivers run way up high on the racetrack. That's a big surprise. That's Brendan gone up there in that <laughs> South Point Chevrolet. I, we always I, see Brendan up high. By the way, Phil, it took him a half a lap to get there. <laughs> it's Kyle Busch out in front of Mike Skinner, Ron Hornaday running third. Busch now has put almost eight tenths of a second on Skinner, so almost a second behind is Mike Skinner already as we've only completed four laps. You know, the top four runners right now have all won Craftsman Truck Series races here in Atlanta. Kyle Busch, Mike Skinner second, Hornaday third, and Tabo Nine have all won here at Atlanta. Regan Smith falling back behind the double zero of Josh Wise. Tony Rizzuti, what's happening with Josh? Well, Rick, Josh told me after his qualifying run that the truck was very loose and it was something that he would be concerned about during the early goings. He felt like as the run went on, it'd be okay, but he came across the radio and said, I really need to run up high in turns one and two, and I'm not able to get up there, and that's making the truck loose. He's right on the bottom in three and four, but he's finally gotten up to that high groove that he's been looking for. And he about got in the way of Regan Smith when he tried to get up into that high group. Yeah, just a couple moments ago, he moves up the racetrack. Regan was really paying attention there, backed off. Then Josh realized he was there, and, and uh, they didn't make any contact. Watch this from the onboard of that Aaron's Dream Machine. See, Josh is going to move up the racetrack. Regan's right there. Regan jumps out of the throttle, gets on the brakes, avoids contact. And that, that dog on the, on the deck lid there was glad about that. <laughs> Caught his breath. That's the lucky dog, and... Josh was lucky there that Regan had his game on. Regan could have very easily caused an accident right there, but he elected to, to give Josh a break early in the race, and that's just a smart move. It's a battle for the 17th position right there. That's Brandon Wood in their one Toyota. There's Jacques Villeneuve in the 27 Bill Davis Toyota. They're battling right now for the 17th position. We talked about the battle for the championship. When the race started, it was 11 points that separated the two. Well, now Skinner has moved in front of Hornaday. That's a five-point difference, but Hornaday has led a lap, so that five points canceled out. Guess what the point difference is? 11. I'm getting confused. I don't know. <laughs> We've completed eight laps of racing from Atlanta Motor Speedway of the 130 scheduled. It's Kyle Busch in front of the field. Want speed and HD? Switch to Direct TV. The Ford F-150 has massive lower front control arms and rear shock absorbers mounted outside the frame rails, giving it the highest available payload in its class. And giving you unbelievable handling and control. Now that's forward thinking. Without organization, your company's maintenance operation gets inundated with supplies. Little by little, box by box. That's why your business needs Fastenal. We come directly to you and create an inventory management system customized to your facility so you can find the parts you need when you need them. Customized inventory management only by Fastenal. Fastenal. Welcome to Inside Errands. Hey, how come we never get to talk about qualifying? Oh, I got this one. No qualifying necessary to errands. No credit checks. Everybody's pre-approved. <sighs> I wish NASCAR was like that. Me, me too. That'd be great. Could we get this back on track? Okay, okay. Well, this guy's obviously the lucky dog leasing this new high-def TV. It seems to me that the, the guy buying the lawnmower is a lucky dog. I disagree. I think Computer Girl is the lucky dog. Did y'all hear me? HD TV. It's high-def. It's guys. Computer Girl. It's totally it's guys. Computer Girl. We'll see you next week. Now you got us in trouble. Introducing six combinations starting from $6.99. Fresh combinations for lunch. Get our fresh garden bar and pair it with one of six choices, like our handcrafted ruby minis or fresh made suits. Six combinations starting from $6.99. Ruby Tuesday. Want National Geographic Channel in HD? Switch to Direct TV.
Thursday night, NASCAR on speed in prime time. It's time to roll with the game face on. The championship drama. The stakes are even higher now. If I just come out of here with the top ten, everything will be fun. The chase is on. It's ten weeks to hell. Plus, the pressure of competition. Everyone's kind of on pins and needles. Trouble turns free. Don't get frustrated. Survival of the fastest. You've got to be ready to run on the ragged edge. This is NASCAR on speed in prime time. Thursday night, 8 Eastern, exclusively on speed. Tomorrow, you're not ready for the green flag until you see NASCAR Race Day, built by the Home Depot. Tune in as the Race Day crew gets you pumped up for Atlanta. Don't miss NASCAR Race Day, built by the Home Depot tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern, live exclusively on speed. Aerial coverage provided to you by Goodyear for track-tested technology. Get there on Goodyear Innovation. Is Krista still up there, you think? I think she's driving the Goodyear oh, bus right now. Okay. The spirit of innovation. What a great view, though, from that uh, that Goodyear blimp on this terrific Atlanta Motor Speedway. Speaking of a great view, out his windshield, he doesn't see anything. But lap trucks, he's already lapping some trucks. And he can look in the rearview mirror and can't find anything either. He's set sail. Hornaday has closed in on Skinner. He has a faster truck than Mike right now, but they both hail in comparison to this cat. Right around the top of the racetrack, Phil. Yeah, all the way around the top of the racetrack. There you see second, third right there, Mike Skinner. And Ron Hornaday, that is our point battle for 2007. Ron Hornaday has his five points for leading. Mike Skinner doesn't yet. Does it surprise you guys that we're already two seconds off the pace? As you see a pass right now for second, Hornaday takes it away from Skinner. But we're two seconds off the fastest lap they ran. We don't. We don't. We're not surprised by that at all. That's why this track is so much fun to race on. You run those breakneck speeds on new tires. But as soon as the tires go away, you start searching for grip. Remember, Rick, they qualified right on the apron, right next to the right. bottom of the racetrack, trying to find the shortest way around for speed. Now look at them. They're doing the opposite. They're up at the top just right. looking for a little grip. You see the color of the surface? When this racetrack was paved, it was black. When this surface is this light like it is now, it's a lot like Darlington and Rockingham. That means the surface is losing its grip, and that's why these trucks are running a couple seconds off what they qualified at. Ron Hornaday has gotten by Mike Skinner, so now Hornaday will try to catch up to Kyle Busch, who is really setting a blistering pace, but Hornaday ran just a tick faster than he did on the last lap that they ran. And he did that while passing Skinner. So that, that Hornaday truck's really fast. And, and those trucks are set up diversely different, Phil. The, the Hornaday truck is coil bound. That means the front end's right down on the road. And Skinner has a more conventional setup. And uh, it's interesting to see one working well and the other going away like that. You really, we really showed that during our qualifying show today. I mean, they're probably three or four inches up higher down the straightaway for that five truck of Mike Skinner with that conventional setup. You see Mark Martin right there. What a move he has made. He started back in the 15th spot, already has that Bubba Burgers forward up into the sixth position in his last start in the truck series in 2007. And this is just what these guys really wanted to see, Phil. 18 green flag laps in a row here. They're going to get that caution, competition caution at about lap 30. They did not want to run 10 and get a caution and then figure out what they wanted to do at that point. They wanted to run a bunch of laps in a row so they could see what these tires were doing. Adam Alexander, I'm guessing that uh, that 51 of Kyle Busch is hoping that the tires are wearing pretty consistently. And one of the things he's talked about on the radio is tires. You know, early in the race when Skinner was right behind him, he came over the radio and said, the tires have enough junk on them right now that if he wants to lead that bad, I'm not going to race for position this early. Since that time, he has put distance between himself and then Mike Skinner, now Ron Hornaday, who has taken over the runner-up spot. Bush not even running this thing at full throttle. He said, I want to be patient in the early going. Little doubt, the 51 solid here at Atlanta today, Tony. Mike Skinner was very quiet on the radio for the first 15 laps, but then the truck started to go away. He came across the radio, told his crew chief, Jeff Hensley, that his Toyota Tundra has become very, very loose. That's why Hornaday got the position. Skinner just assigned to just ride along and wait for that competition caution. So Mike Skinner fighting his ill-handling truck early on in this race. Look at the trucks we've got here at Atlanta Motor Speedway running so close together. Regan Smith, Brian Scott in that number 16, Willie Allen in the 13, Regan Smith in that 47. Nice job by Brian Scott early in this race, Bill. He's drove up around a bunch of trucks. Yeah, Brian started back in the 21st spot. Look, looks like he just took over the 15th spot that time. There's Joey Clatton at 09. We talked about him early in the show. Regan Smith, the 47. Brendan up there at the top of the racetrack and the groove he likes so much up there. 
Michael, you're another guy that likes, likes to run the top of the racetrack. I like to go wherever I can make my stuff stick. And a lot of times, no one else is up top. You can get a good bite up there. Uh, but right now, you see Hornaday, he's dedicated himself to the bottom, uh, the leader to the top. It's all over the place. Go wherever you want. And Ron Hornaday is actually gaining some ground on our leader, Kyle Busch. Kyle had almost a two-second lead a few laps ago, and now it's been cut down to about a half a second lead. Yep. Watch these guys. See, they're two distinct different lines. One high, one low, and both of them working just fine. This lap truck will make a difference uh, ever so slightly in Ron Hornaday's line as he goes into turn three and four. Yeah, Ron can, can run that high line, so lap, lap trucks really don't affect the racing here as much as we saw at Martinsville last week because you have options. You can go around the high side, you can go around the middle of the racetrack or whatever. So they don't have as much of an effect here as they do on a short track like Martinsville where it's hard to hard pass. Half a second separates Kyle Busch and Ron Hornaday. Hornaday chasing the truck up the racetrack. Kyle Busch continuing to go by slower lap traffic. going fast I'm comfortable slowing down I'm comfortable in Wrangler introducing relaxed straight leg and relaxed boot fit from Wrangler jeans company new fits new styles great comfort Wrangler jeans company a new generation of Wrangler through November 16th, stay two nights. Stay two nights. Use your MasterCard card. MasterCard card. Earn twice the rewards. Twice the rewards. Twice is nice. Very nice. Go to bestwestern.com. At Fastenal, we're more than America's largest supplier of fasteners. We provide brand name tools to get your job done. Fastenal, we get it right. Visit fastenal.com for a store near you. Want speed in HD? Switch to Direct TV. Welcome back side by side for the lead on the inside. It's Ron Hornaday outside. It's Kyle Busch in the 51 as they come to the stripe. This is for the lead of the race. Ron Hornaday was able to get by Kyle Busch and it looked as though he was going to make the pass stick. But then Kyle Busch was able to run back on the high side and get back past him. Mikey, as you talk about, you see Ron Hornaday stuck to the white line down there. Kyle Busch keeps his momentum up up on the outside. That time he was able to hold off that 33 truck, but just a few moments ago, the 33 truck actually made the pass for the lead. Here comes Ron Hornaday back on the bottom of the racetrack, trying to take that position away again. Again, we have a competition caution that's going to come out around lap 30, so we're about two laps away from that happening as these two continue side by side for the lead. And that truck just ahead of, them, ahead of them up there is Jack Sprague, so he's he's probably happier than anyone that this caution's getting ready to fall because he can get to pit road and work on that Conway Freight Toyota. Look at these guys. Look at <laughs> Kyle's going to go to the inside. Give that a try one time. It's like it's the end of the race. Kyle Busch just stuck back down on the inside, took the position back away from Ron Hornaday. And Hornaday's smiling right now, though, Phil. He's running 30 laps on that truck, and he's fast, and he knows it. He's going to come to pit road, adjust it, and he's got a really good feeling about his race today. Is Ron Hornaday right now saying, okay, that kid is going a little bit crazy for this early in the race. Is he backing off a little bit? I'd say absolutely not. <laughs> I'd say Ron Hornaday has not backed off. He wants to lead that race. He, he would love to lead the, lead the most laps. He, he knew that kid was crazy when they started. <laughs> he didn't have to see the way he was going to drive to prove it. Adam, what are they talking about on the radio? And mute would be the word to describe the radio, Rick. Ron Hornaday's been very quiet, but I can tell you this. After starting on the pole and dropping back to third, there was no concern. And the reason why? Because yesterday after practice, this team felt very comfortable with their truck on the long run, winning the pole today just a bonus. And as you can see, as this run's continued, that 33 truck has dug in and gotten after it. It is amazing how what a pleasure it is to drive a truck that's driving like that 51 of Kyle Busch or that 33 of Ryan Hornaday. You see all these good trucks right here going a lap down. They just put Sprague a lap down. That's Willie Allen. They're putting a lap down. It's amazing the pace they're settling. There's David Starr getting ready to go a lap down. Well, David Starr might get lucky here as the caution is about to come out. There is the caution flag. That's the competition caution we were expecting around lap 30. It came out. Just at the end of lap 30 as they cross the start finish line. The person that would have gotten lucky or not right now is Josh Weiss in that double zero Aaron's Dream Machine truck. He had been lapped, but Kyle Busch 
had just driven up beside Justin Martz in that 03 Toyota and the caution flew. It'll depend where they cross the scoring markers, Phil, as to whether Justin Marks was a lap down and gets the lucky dog or Josh Weiss receives it in his lucky dog, Aaron Strut. Up oh, there he is. Aaron's lucky dog going to the Aaron's dream machine. Double zero of Josh Wise. So that, he'll well, get back on quite well. Everything's right with the world now, right? Yeah, it all makes sense to me. <laughs> and to Darrell at home. We saw the 33 team getting the tires ready. About to come on to pit road as the entire field. Again, this caution coming out. It's the first caution of the day, and it was called by NASCAR. There was no debris or no accidents taking place on the racetrack. Remember, remember in practice yesterday, guys were saying tires won't last five laps, laps six ah, laps tops now how smart is goodyear <laughs> only thing they do is what they have to do which is bring a tire that will wear so that the heat will dissipate and they don't blister tires they wear them but that's what they're supposed to do is wear they run 30 laps here not a sign of a problem and it'll only get better as each lap passes phil one of the things phil I apologize but one of the things they're going to be obviously looking at very closely will be the tire wear when they come on and Adam and Tony are going to be down there on pit road, so they'll be able to tell us whose tires are maybe wearing the most consistently. Yeah, that's right. Because, you know, a lot of things can go into that, how their chassis are working, what kind of camber they have in the front ends of these trucks. So that, that's something that all these crew chiefs really want to take a look at is how their tire wears. But as Michael said, we know that we can run 30 laps. Actually, these tires had qualifying on them, too. So they've had now 32, 33 laps on them, and obviously not a sign of a problem yet. We were expecting the pit window to be between 50 and 60. So if we go back to green flag racing and we're able to stay for a long green flag run, we know they can at least go that far as long as fuel. At least we would hope they would. There's a, there's a couple of trucks, though, that are just dominant. Kyle Busch and Hornaday drove away from everyone. So it'll be interesting to see how these adjustments, these guys are coming to pit road for the first time. It'll be interesting to see how they adjust their trucks, Tony Rizzuti, and try to make them better to keep up with the toward pace the front tour set. Mike Skinner, the first to hit pit road. He's complained that the truck is good getting in, but loose when he gets back to the gas. They'll make a two tire change. Also go two rounds down on the track bar, down to Adam Alexander. Four tires fueled for Kyle Busch. They're gonna make a chassis adjustment. They think they can make this better. Richie Waters also calling for the team to wipe off the grill. For Ron Hornaday, four tires fuel, no adjustment. Go, 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 He's satisfied go. with how this track all is handling all the, the way, all the way, all the way, The service is complete. Top of your screen for Kyle Busch. He's down and away, but the two tire stop gonna get Mike Skinner off of pit road first. That's interesting, huh? Yeah, what yeah. a strategy. Now, That's that extra two tires that, that Goodyear allowed the teams and NASCAR allowed the teams to have. Yeah. He just went in and put those on. He's still got all of his other tires yeah. left. And yeah, there was no tire wear issue with the left side either. Kyle Busch was leading when they came on the pit road, and now we've got a new leader here in Atlanta. time you replace your wiper blades. Cry is not for me, cause I'm never gonna right now in advance, rain. all wiper blades are 25% off. Because I'm free. And as always, we That's install them fast and free. Me. Yeah, free. We're ready in advance. Sunday, NASCAR race day on speed. This is about me and banging. Hot is heating up the chinks. They need Jeff Gordon to have a bad day. With Boyer quietly on the prowl. We just have to be better. Did you just hear that? And the gap between Gordon and Johnson closing. They will be racing tough today. How long can the Buddy Buddy show last? Well, we were just talking about that. Get it on, man. NASCAR race day built by the Home Depot live from Atlanta. Sunday, 12 Eastern. NASCAR on speed. It's huge. What do all these businesses have in common? They switched to Optimum Light Path. Now they have the communications network built for business, and so can you. When you make the switch, you'll save your business up to 50% over your current provider. Plus, we'll connect you to the nation's most advanced fully fiber optic network for free. But don't just take our word for it. 
Join these businesses and experience the Optimum Light Path difference for yourself. Visit OptimumLightPathNow.com or call 1-877-LIGHTPATH today to learn more. Can an odor-free cream stand up to your back pain? You bet if it's Asper Cream. Asper Cream is clinically proven to knock out the pain with the maximum strength formula that's odor-free. Arthritis pain stopped? You bet if it's Asper Cream. Arthritis pain's debilitating, and it really hurt when I couldn't play Rocky's favorite game. Then my doctor recommended Capsaicin. Capsaicin works differently, blocking pain for fast-lasting relief. Capsaicin cream and new no-mess applicator. Takes the pain out of arthritis. Try. Welcome back. Pit stops are over, and yes, that is a lone tire making its way around this racetrack, and that's not on pit road. That actually took place on the back stretch, and then went almost all the way through turns three and four. Patrick Shelter in that number 12, losing the right rear, and he's going to make his way back down onto pit road. You see the damage to that truck when that tire left. That tire just about beat him back around the race. No, I'm, I'm kind of concerned about that. Maybe uh, driving's not all what it's <laughs> cracked up to be. The tire did about as good as Patrick did. Adam Alexander. The, the quickest thing to happen in this 33 pit today was Rick Wren, the crew chief, getting off the box and coming down to look at the tires after the pit stop was complete. And you can see they're continuing to look at them. The one thing Rick just told me is they look a lot better now than they did yesterday after that opening practice, what you would expect with all the rubber that's been put in this racetrack since that time. And the only area they showed cords is where Hornaday slid the truck coming to a stop for the pit stop. So I think there's always reason for concern when you're running for a championship, but they're not overly concerned at this early stage. Tony? On the turn four end of pit road, Mike Skinner's right side tires look fairly good. They're obviously worn a little bit more than we would expect, but no cord showing for his tires. A little bit of wear more on the inside of the tire for his Toyota Tundra. Well, and guys, you talk about the 51. He was the leader, and you can see they're going to go to work on those tires as well. We did have a report that there were some cords showing for the 51. Now, I've not had a chance to actually look at these tires. We will follow up there, but this is a, a team that complained about it yesterday, and there, there you can see on the Telestrator being circled where the cords are showing. So Kyle Busch perhaps going to ease it back on this next run, or perhaps, Phil, Michael, that's why they made the adjustment after that first run of the day to make sure they take care of those tires. You guys can add more on that I'm sure well you, that's that's a concern but that's all it is you know that, that that's just a, a, a product of a tire that wears and, and let me reiterate the reason why the tires wear is to dissipate heat these trucks go so fast through these turns if that rubber doesn't wear off the tires will heat up and blister and no one blistering is the worst thing you can have wear is just a product of taking care of the blistering and that's a lot of times we talk about how thin that rubber is actually on these tires and that's the very reason for that you know much unlike a street car that has a lot of rubber on the tires, these tires have no more than about four thirty seconds of an inch. Almost there. He's going. He's going. Green flag back in the air. Mike Skinner leads the field this time. Just behind him, it's Mark Martin running third now is Kyle Busch. Fourth, Ron Hornaday. And rounding out the top five is Ted Musgrave. Now remember, Mike Skinner definitely only put two tires on. He just changed right side tires. Again, no issues with the left side tires in the practice yesterday. And remember that right side tire that these trucks are on are the same tires that the COTs will test as we see a battle for the lead. Mark Martin goes for the lead. But the two guys behind him, the 51 and the 33, both got four new tires on. The dudes in the front only have two new ones. Coming out of turn number four into the trioval. Ron Hornaday on the inside. Mike Skinner on the outside. Right behind him is Kyle Busch. Mark Martin looked for the lead going into three, and he's running fifth right now. Look at Musgrave sneaking up in the middle of this mess. Ted Musgrave now on the bottom of the racetrack. He'll move up very close to Mike Skinner as they come off of turn two. And Skinner and Mark Martin are very well aware, were very well aware, that they wouldn't be able to hold these guys off. This is a strategy play, Phil. They're three kind of wide all over one another. Matt Crafton on the outside. It was Rick Crawford on the inside. Jack Sprague was sandwiched in between there. He's still sandwiched in between three wide as they go across the start finish line. Got the eight of Chad McCombie on the inside. Jack Sprague's in the middle. There's Willie Allen on the outside as we continue to watch the battle between Hornaday and Kyle Busch. I think there's got to be a sense of urgency for all these guys when they saw how fast Kyle Busch came around to lap them. I mean, they were, he was right on their bumper only 30 laps into the race. So these guys want to go get these positions now while they got some fresh tires on their trucks. We saw Kyle Busch running 
up a lot higher on the racetrack, and it looked as though there was more wear on his right side tires. Could running up high give him a little bit of an issue? Yeah, it could have a little bit of, uh, of that might be a factor, but also he's going a lot faster than everybody else, and yep. that too can factor into it. There's a hundred things. That truck's balanced really well there, though, and he, he, he didn't have much wear for as fast as he was going. Look at these, look at these guys. Two and three wide all the way down the back stretch. Looks like we're at Talladega. <laughs> and I don't know if these guys are going to be able to keep this up. Great view of that number eight Garmin Chevrolet driven by Chad McCombie. Chad's driven that truck up into the top 10. Started back in the 19th position. Joy, Joy Clanton just taking that 10th spot away from Chad McCombie. Rick Crawford has dropped back into the ninth spot. It's Ron Hornaday out in front of this field. Kyle Busch running second to him. About three tenths of a second separate these top two Chevrolets. Oh yeah, this is what you crave. The most advanced battery technology out there from two names you can count on. It's Craftsman Professional Power Tools fueled by die-hard lithium-ion batteries. Revolutionary. Lithium-ion technology is lighter. It lasts longer and gives you over 1,500 more charges than the average battery. Yep, the future is here. It's lithium power from Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Get it at Sears. Single again, with gray hair. How am I gonna start over? Just for men targets only the gray in five easy minutes. You know, dating again is easier than I thought. And now I wonder, why did I ever put up with gray hair? Show them what you've got. Stay in the game with Just For Men. at a 315 horsepower engine with the best highway fuel economy of any full-size pickup. 90 years of R&D. Chevy Silverado. This is our truck. Texas racing fans are full throttle fans. The pressure is on during the NASCAR Triple Header Weekend at Texas Motor Speedway November 1st through the 4th. November 1st through the 4th. With only two, two races remaining for each of the NASCAR series, you can see the championship contenders duke it out in search of the prestigious victory lane only at Texas Motor Speedway, the great American speedway. Great front stretch tickets remain for the Dickies 500 Triple Header Weekend. Call 888-816-8671 or visit TexasMotorSpeedway.com. Next Saturday night, the World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series. Hold on to your wing! And Lake Models. What a battle we've got here. Back to back. Three hours of live coverage from Charlotte begins next Saturday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on... Welcome back. Here's the problem. Our second caution has come out. This time it was for an accident. Chad Chaffin involved in it. Josh Wise is involved in it. And you see the 75 of Clay Rogers and Clay Rogers climbing out of that truck. Yeah, heavy damage to a lot of these trucks. You talk, we're talking about running over 180 miles an hour and trouble happens on the racetrack like it does. And there's a lot of damage. I think we can go back and Josh got in a little bit of got out of shape a little bit. You see somebody went through the mud there. It looks like Travis Kittleson. Look at the mud all over that truck. I'm not sure how he has any mud because we haven't had rain here in three or four months, but sprinkler system. Yeah. Let's take a look at what just took place, and this just happens moments ago because you can see the safety crews helping out these drivers as they're getting out of their trucks. There's Clay Rogers right there. Watch this now. Watch in the middle. Mm. Looked like Josh had a head of steam on the 40 and tried to lay off of him because someone was up underneath him on the inside and got loose. The Travis Kittleson did not make any contact. That's him right of your screen. If you wonder why he's spinning now, he can't see. He Tim, Tim Sauter in that 07 Luster Buildings Chevrolet did a nice job of boarding. You see Josh get sideways and he makes contact on the inside with that 75 truck of Clay Rogers. Clay in turn hits the 40 of Chad Chaffin. Tim Sauter, I think, in that 0-7 is saying to himself, unbelievable how I made it through this one. Yeah, yeah what a still, nice job he did get by that. He's on the radio saying, did, did y'all see me get through that? Did y'all see what I just did? Wow, and that, that gave you a shot of what 
Tim Sauter saw as far as he was riding right behind all of this accident and really threaded the needle. You can see Josh, the, the 75 started to come up and Josh wanted to lay off of the of the 40 on the outside, just was in a place that he, he couldn't get out of. See, Brendan Gaughan does a nice job also getting through there. Travis Kittleson went by through the grass. Looked like Tim Sauter had to avoid every truck that was involved <laughs> in that accident. Did a nice job. Safety crews are taking care of the drivers and taking care of the trucks that are on the racetrack. Willie Allen gets the Aaron's lucky dog from this second caution. When we come back, we'll line them all back up. No one has more access to the action than a pit crew member until now. if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Don't take Viagra if you take nitrates for chest pain as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, upset stomach, and abnormal vision. To avoid long-term injury, seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. Stop taking Viagra and call your doctor right away if you experience a sudden decrease in vision or hearing. Now's the time to make your move. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. A single lap to go. Does he have the fuel to go the distance? In NASCAR, we get the most out of every gallon. On the road, you can do the same. Keep your tires properly inflated. Maintain your car regularly for the best performance. And always observe the speed limit. Leave, Leave the, the speed speeding to us. us. Fuel conservation. Do, do your, your part. part. Sunday night. What's on your mind, my friend? Go ride with Dave. What is this kid thinking? Give him a piece of your mind. I am pissed. Tell us how you really feel. Only one voice matters. Yours. The best damn racing show, period. Wind Tunnel with Dave to Spain. Sunday night, 9 Eastern, only on Speed. No one covers NASCAR like NASCAR on Speed. Tune in all weekend long next week as we deliver live coverage from Texas. Get all the on and off track action with NASCAR on Speed beginning next Friday. 12 p.m. Eastern live and only on speed. Take a look at who is involved in this crash. Josh Wise, Travis Kittleson, Chad Chaffin, and Clay Rogers. Tell you who else was involved? Tim Sauter. He just didn't hit anything. He, he was right in the middle of it and drove his way through it. Take another look at what just took place. Right up your screen, you see the double zero get a little bit loose in between those two trucks. He makes contact with the 75, turns him into the 40. Those trucks have a lot of damage. You see, on the very outside of the racetrack, that's the 07 of Tim Sauter. Travis Kittleson went by through the grass. T.J. Bell tried to avoid it. Unfortunately, made a little bit of contact with the outside wall. He's made several pit stops here to try to repair that damage. There's another view of the same situation. There's Tim Sauter barely avoiding the double zero of Josh Wise. Now, now he's got the 50 running across the racetrack in front of him and the 08 spinning in front of him. Everybody <laughs> wanted to spin in front of Tim Sauter, and he just kept this one. Look at this, watch this on board. This will show you a good shot of Tim Sauter. You see him there and there. <laughs> Just our second caution of the day from Atlanta Motor Speedway. In front of the field, it's still Hornaday, Kyle Busch, Todd Bodine, Mark Martin, and Ted Musgrave, your top five. When we come back, we'll see the green flag once again. is equipped with vented disc brakes standard on all four wheels they're vented so they stay cooler perform better and maximize stopping power so even though you'll probably never have to haul a 30,000 pound aircraft 
At least you know you can stop one. I changed my oil. Why worry about engine sludge? You can't see sludge coming, but it can rob gas mileage and hold your car back. Yeah, right. Castrol GTX has a powerful formula to stop sludge in its tracks. Give me a burger, fries. GTX's unique dispersants neutralize sludge for superior protection among leading 5W and 10W 30s. And some extra napkins. Castrol GTX. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. The bright lights of Vegas. It's a great experience. The thrill of NASCAR. A pair that can't lose. NASCAR. Vegas, baby. The fastest weekend of the season. And the most exciting city in the world. Watch twice, three times. Let it roll. With NASCAR's top stars in Vegas. Call 800-644-4444. I thought taking payments for my settlement was the right thing to do, but life has a way of throwing little surprises at you. Getting small payments over time just wasn't working. I really needed money now. So I called Law Cash and they gave me a lump sum. I mean, who knows what other little surprises are around the corner. Just in case it's twins. Call 1-800-815-4019. Get money for your annuity, lottery, jackpot winnings, or even pre-settlement money. Law Cash, it's your money, get it now. tools of the trade we're talking about tool sets now if you're working on one of these race trucks you've got to have a cart filled with all these tools well craftsman has made available this tool set if you're working around the house 83 different pieces for any problem that might come up around the house it's got utility knives a tape measure it has pliers it's got a hammer it's got everything that you would possibly need if anything comes up around the house and it's in this handy bag you can find yours at your local sears go down track side Tony Rizzuti what's going on with Skinner well, Mike Skinner's come go, go, in go. he's complaining outside, that the out. truck is extremely loose so much so that he's had to slow down they went to the left rear of the car pulled a spring rubber out of that left rear Mike Skinner is down and away and again remember Mike Skinner came in and only changed right side tires so now obviously they were able to get new left side tires in for that truck and they did a a chassis adjustment by pulling the spring rubber. Yeah, quite a few other. You see Derek Darnell, and he also has left side tires going on that northern the tool and equipment Ford for Jack Roush. Adam, what's going on down there? Yeah, they were talking about extremely loose, and this early in the going, a good opportunity to come down and work on it. So I'm sure that's the call for Matt Pusha and the guys. He said on a scale of 1 to 10 in the loose category, this thing's an 11. That was the word from Eric Darnell on the radio, so trying to make it better for the guy who finished third here one year ago. I don't think that 11 fits in that 1 to 10 scale. Well, somebody needs to have a talk with him. Hey, Krista. Our aerial coverage provided to you by Goodyear. Krista, I think, riding co-pilot here today for track-tested technology. Get there on Goodyear Innovation. Krista's doing a nice job up there. Is she operating the camera? She may be running the camera. Yeah. She's doing a fine job. Let's see if we can talk to Kyle Busch. They're going to give him one to go. Hey, Kyle Busch, I know there's one to go real quickly. How's that uh, Chevrolet? Well, it's pretty good. We've got... Uh bit of an issue on the left front, but uh, nothing too serious. We got some work to do at the shop, but we'll get it fixed for the next time in Texas. So, all in all, 33 is pretty quick, and uh, you know it's going to be a hard cat pass here in the late going. So, we'll give it all we got. All right, buddy. We know you've taken this truck to Victory Lane before here, so we know how to do it. Good luck. All right, thanks, guys. I always think talking on the left front, you think it's a camber issue? Maybe oh. he saw more wear on that corner than he thought. Must have been new. He said we have to go back to the shop to repair that. So. Or maybe he might be bottoming out or something because obviously Kyle's one of the trucks that runs that coal mine setup, so maybe hitting a little bit too hard. Before we go back to Green, Tony Rizzuti is with Josh Wise. Josh Wise has walked from the infield care center, and Josh, uh, looks like you were the 
meeting the sandwich off of turn four. We got a replay of it. Uh, take us through what happened. Yeah, I, uh, I just kind of put myself in a bad position there, I think. You know, uh, kind of hole closed up on me there, but I probably shouldn't have been there in the first place. So I just hate it for everyone at Darrell Walter Motorsports and uh, everyone who's, uh, you know, giving me these opportunities. Just uh, need to put myself in better positions than that. This was the final truck race of the